After the terrorist attacks on September 11, 2001, the federal government had an almost immediate reflex action in order to prevent another such occurrence. This was not unusual, as throughout American history, laws have been passed that were ostensibly to provide security, but eventually became too intrusive and often labeled unconstitutional. The other side of the argument is that certain laws were required to increase national security and protect American citizens, and were therefore necessary depending upon the circumstances. We will discuss both arguments here. What is the Patriot Act? Why was it created? Why do some people support it while others condemn it? Has the Patriot Act been a positive or a negative law? Has it been effective? Hello, I'm Colin Heaton, military veteran, historian, author, and welcome to this episode of Forgotten History. Today, we still live with the Patriot Act, although in a different version from when it first became law. It followed in the tradition of previous security measures, which became laws for better or worse. For example, the Alien and Sedition Acts were a series of four laws passed by the Federalist majority in Congress in 1798 under President John Adams due to fears of a war with France. There was also the concern of foreign spies in the country, so Adams signed it into law on July 14, 1798. It was set to expire on March 3, 1801, the last day of his term in office. Over time, these laws changed, but they still remain in effect restricting foreign nationals and limiting freedom of the press, especially regarding published information that caused discomfort to the president or other senior officials, which was and still is a serious First Amendment issue. One part of the law, the Naturalization Act, increased residency requirements for U.S. citizenship regarding foreigners from five years up to 14 years. This was done as a matter of preventing new immigrants from voting after becoming citizens because they favored the Democratic Republicans in their majority, so the Federalists wanted to exclude them from voting. Under the Alien Enemies Act, the government could arrest and deport all male citizens of an enemy nation in the event of war, while the Alien Friends Act allowed the president to deport any non-citizen suspected of plotting against the government, even in peacetime. However, the most important part of the law was the Sedition Act, which targeted anyone who spoke out against the president or the Federalist-dominated government under Adams at that time. Essentially, the law made it a crime to state or publish any false, scandalous, and malicious writing against Congress or the president, and made it illegal to conspire to oppose any measure or measures of the government. Of course, the government decided what was false and what was scandalous, much like the Biden administration today with their censorship. James Madison and Thomas Jefferson were both critics, and they argued that the government had no legal authority to enact laws not specified in the Constitution. Jefferson wrote, The several states who formed that instrument, the Constitution, being sovereign and independent, had the unquestionable right to judge of its infraction, and that a nullification by those states of all unauthorized acts is the rightful remedy. By 1802, the laws were repealed or expired, except for the Alien Enemies Act, which is still law today, and in 1918, Congress amended that law to include women. The Alien Enemies Act was invoked by Franklin Roosevelt during World War II to incarcerate Japanese Americans into internment camps. The Patriot Act would be the successor of these earlier laws. Prior to the 9-11 attacks, Congress focused on legislation to prevent international terrorism. But after the February 26, 1993 World Trade Center bombing and the April 1995 Oklahoma City bombing, domestic terrorism gained more attention. As a result of these events, on April 24, 1996, President Bill Clinton signed the Anti-Terrorism and Effective Death Penalty Act of 1996 to assist law enforcement in identifying and prosecuting domestic and international terrorists. 
But Clinton asked Congress to give law enforcement expanded wiretap authority and increase access to the records of citizens in terrorism cases. Congress refused, mainly because many felt loosening surveillance and records rules was unconstitutional. After 9-11, congressional leaders worried about their re-election approached U.S. Attorney General John Ashcroft to push for a stronger law. Therefore, the Department of Justice proposed a new law that expanded the application of investigative tools already being used against drug dealers and organized crime. The Patriot Act was proposed and passed in Congress with bipartisan support and signed into law by President George W. Bush on October 26, 2001, just weeks after the September 11 terrorist attacks against the United States, and it is more than 300 pages long officially called the Uniting and Strengthening America by providing appropriate tools required to intercept and obstruct terrorism, the Patriot Act was intended to improve the abilities of U.S. law enforcement to detect and deter terrorism. The act was intended to improve homeland security by allowing law enforcement to use surveillance and wiretapping to investigate terror-related crimes. Also, to allow federal agents to request court permission to use roving wiretaps to track a specific terrorist suspect, and also allow for delayed notification search warrants to prevent a terrorist suspect from learning they were a target of an investigation. It also allowed federal agents to seek federal court permissions to obtain bank and business records to aid investigations and prevent money laundering for terrorism financing. It was also meant to improve information and intelligence sharing methods and cooperation between government agencies. It also increased tougher penalties for convicted terrorists and those who assisted them, and allowed search warrants to be obtained in any district or in any state where terror-related activity occurred, no matter where the warrant was executed or in which jurisdiction the so-called activity took place. It also ended the statute of limitations for certain terror-related crimes, essentially making all situations a federal responsibility instead of a state issue. Greater restrictions on aliens involved or even suspected of terrorist activities to enter the United States was invoked. It also provided aid to victims of terrorism and public safety officers involved or injured while investigating or preventing terrorism or responding to terrorist attacks. In 2004, during his testimony before the United States Senate Committee on the Judiciary, FBI Director Robert Mueller said, The Patriot Act has proved extraordinarily beneficial in the war on terrorism and has changed the way the FBI does business. Many of our counterterrorism successes, in fact, are the direct results of provisions included in the Act. Mueller also stated that without the provisions in the Act, the FBI could be forced back into pre-September 11 practices attempting to fight the war on terrorism with one hand tied behind our backs. Many of the Patriot Act's requirements were to expire in 2005, and renewing the law was passionately argued in the U.S. House of Representatives and the Senate. Although there were legitimate constitutional civil liberties and privacy concerns, President Bush signed the USA Patriot and Terrorism Reauthorization Act on March 9, 2006. Although the Patriot Act was revised in 2015 to the constitutional rights of ordinary Americans, some provisions of the law remain controversial. One of those controversies is whether or not it was effective. One example was, under the previously existing wiretap laws, if a suspected criminal was under legal wiretap, and his conversations recorded, the agents listening in had to turn off the recording if the conversation was with a party not under investigation. Such as, for example, if mob boss John Gotti was calling to order a pizza, the person on the other end could not be recorded to protect their privacy. Under the new law, the entire conversation could be recorded to assist in the investigation. It was also argued that a situation such as this also placed the innocent party into the investigation without their knowledge, which could also have them wiretapped and surveilled even though they were not conducting any criminal activity. A Washington Post article from 2015 stated that the Justice Department admitted, FBI agents can't point to any major terrorism cases they've cracked 
thanks to the key snooping powers in the Patriot Act. However, another 2012 report from the Heritage Foundation stated that 50 terrorist attacks have been thwarted since 9-11, with 47 being the direct result of the work of law enforcement and intelligence agencies. This argument claimed that the Patriot Act was critical in helping law enforcement identify leads, surveil, and wiretap suspects, examine records, and prevent attacks. In fact, there have been many cases of law enforcement and intelligence agencies preventing attacks. The most vehement criticism of the Patriot Act by civil rights groups claimed that it violates Americans' constitutional rights, allowing the government to spy on them without due process, search their homes without consent, and increase the risk of ordinary citizens being accused of crimes without just cause. The federal government asserts the Patriot Act has safeguards to protect the rights of American citizens, which is questionable, as some parts of the law were found illegal by the various courts. For example, in 2015, the United States Court of Appeals for the Second Circuit found Section 215 of the Patriot Act could not be used to validate the bulk collection of Americans' phone records. President Barack Obama signed the USA Freedom Act into law on June 2, 2015, in order to help prevent the Patriot Act from infringing on American civil liberties. This terminated the bulk collection of all records under Section 215 of the Patriot Act and allowed challenges to national security letter gag orders. It also required better transparency and more information sharing between the United States Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Court, better known as FISA, and the American people. The revision under Obama allows the government to track suspected foreign terrorists for 72 hours after they enter the United States and increases required maximum penalties for anyone providing support to specific foreign terrorist organizations. It also allows limited use of bulk data collection under Section 215 in an emergency, but critics believe it doesn't go far enough. The benefits of the Patriot Act and the USA Freedom Act regarding national security will continue to be debated against the potential intrusion on Americans' privacy and their civil rights. Yet, supporters of the Patriot Act may have a case, and here's why. On May 1, 2010, a terrorist attack was attempted in Times Square in Manhattan, New York. Two street vendors alerted NYPD after they spotted smoke coming from a vehicle and a car bomb was discovered. The bomb had been ignited but failed to explode and was disarmed before it caused any casualties. Federal agents then arrested Faisal Shahzad, a 30-year-old Pakistan-born resident of Bridgeport, Connecticut, who obtained U.S. citizenship in April 2009. He was already a target of investigation and was arrested after he had boarded Emirates Flight 202 to Dubai at John F. Kennedy International Airport. After his arrest, he admitted to the attempted car bombing and that he had trained at a Pakistani terrorist training camp. Many suspected and even known terrorists have been apprehended either attempting to enter the country or already being here due to the intelligence gathered afforded by the Patriot Act and the FISA Court. Still, the critics also have a valid concern that even the innocent can be drawn into the investigations, often arrested, even charged, another detractor to the federal government having too much power, such as the abuse of the FISA court by FBI Director James Comey and others in the Justice Department when they submitted fraudulent and falsified evidence to spy on U.S. citizens, not just foreigners, and therefore committing perjury on their sworn affidavits targeting Republican political officials. So in conclusion, the Patriot Act still exists, although a shadow of its former self. But we still have to be wary of government abuses, as are highly illustrated in the lawfare used against Donald Trump and other Republicans by the Democrat-run Justice Department and FBI. So take it for what it's worth and come to your own conclusions. Thanks for watching today's episode of Forgotten History. If you like this episode, please consider becoming a channel member or joining our Patreon page. This would help us offset the ever-increasing cost of production. As always, please like, share, and comment, 
And if you have any show ideas, please contact us and we'll get back to you as soon as possible. Until next time.